Hi, I'm Rachel and I'm back with another week of what's for dinner. It's been such a busy summer and we're right in the tail end where we're trying to squeeze every last bit of fun in that we can. But I did manage to come up with some quick and easy dinner ideas for this week. We had been away for a week and we were just getting home from that trip to Traverse City and it was actually 11 o'clock at night when we finally were able to make something for dinner. We were starving and so we just made some really quick burgers on the stovetop and I just added some cheese on top of those and here I am thinking I was going to eat two whole hamburgers but... My eyes were way bigger than my stomach, especially for being 11 o'clock at night. But like I said, we hadn't eaten all day, so we were really hungry. But a cheeseburger always hits the spot, in my opinion, even if it's bedtime. <laughs> but my dog was super happy because he did get to have a whole hamburger patty. And I know that these burgers look super sloppy, just like my burgers always are, but they were so thick and juicy. They needed all of that ooey gooey ketchup and mustard. Well, let's cook. So for this one, I'm getting out my can of bacon grease. And I'm using these hash browns with onions and peppers, but I'm also going to add more chopped onion. Adding in some chopped up onion, and then I'm going to add some seasoning like some garlic, some salt, and some pepper. Next I'm going to add some diced ham. I'm making some pepper gravy to go on top of the uh, hash brown. I, I have my three cups of water on the stove so that it can come to a boil and then the directions on these packets of gravy say to mix with a half a cup of water but I usually mix with a half a cup of milk. Um, this time I have half and half. I just happen to have a lot of it on hand and no milk. So. That's what I'm using. Just going to get that all stirred up. Now that that water is boiling, we're going to turn off the heat and remove it, then add the actual gravy mix. Okay, we'll just give that some time to sit and thicken up. Next I'm going to work on getting some eggs cracked and beaten to add into the hash brown skillet. This is just another really easy meal. It comes together really quick. And of course, if you like to make your own gravy, do that. Okay, well, my husband just walked in and called this hash, so I guess that's what it is. But I'm just going to pour those beaten eggs right in. 
And we're just going to stir and fold so that all of the egg gets cooked through. Well, we love breakfast for dinner. We love breakfast for breakfast and breakfast for lunch. But anyway, we usually end up having breakfast for dinner about once a week. Sometimes even more. But anyway, it's just one of those things. There are so many different ways to make breakfast for dinner. So many different options. And this one is really super easy and very filling. So it's the perfect for a dinner. Um, sometimes I just take all of these ingredients and throw them into a casserole dish and just throw it in the oven, but it's way too hot to use the oven <laughs> right now. All right, this is good to go. My husband would like cheese on it, but I'm going to let him cheese his own. It's just not sounding really good to me. And I'm just going to top my bowl off with some of that peppered gravy. And dinner is ready. Do you ever put an appliance on top of your refrigerator and then you forget that you own it? That's kind of what happened with this Ninja Foodie. But I've decided that I want to attempt to make ew, meatloaf in it. But I'm going to go get it washed up real quick because this is pretty gross. Alright, I've got the whole thing cleaned up now. And we're just going to get started on getting this meatloaf assembled. Just adding a couple of cracked eggs. I've got three pounds of ground beef. I'm going to add a packet of Lipton beefy onion soup mix. I do not have any onions right now. I'm also going to use one of these small packets of saltine crackers. This is all I have for crackers as well. I could substitute a lot of other things like oatmeal, bread, whatever, but this is what I'm using. A lot of times I'll use a box of stuffing mix. But today it's going to be crackers. I'm just getting them crushed up nice and fine. And that's another thing that you can do any way you want to. You can put your crackers in a plastic bag and pound them with a um, rolling pin or a cleaver or your hands. Doesn't matter. But since I know my hands are going to get dirty in this meatloaf anyway, why not just use my hands? Adding some Slap Your Mama. I am out of granulated garlic. And since we like crushed red pepper, just figured I would use this because as you see, the ingredients are salt, pepper, red pepper, and granulated garlic. And I am still cooking with half and half because I have not bought milk. We very rarely use milk. So just want to get those crackers moistened up. And now I'm just going to come in with my fingers and form this into a meatloaf. And I try to keep one hand out and clean as much as possible until the very end when it actually takes two hands to form it into the loaf shape. But I just want to get all of that egg and the crackers and the seasonings mixed into the meat. And it is much too hot to be turning on the oven, which is our preferred way to make a meatloaf. So we're going to see what we can do with our foodie. I don't know about anybody else, but I am over summer in the heat. I am ready for all the fall food. 
my favorite. Com comfort food. <laughs> and yeah, as speaking of comfort, I am just making some mac and cheese to go with this meatloaf. And I know like in our house, it's like against the law to not have mashed potatoes with the meatloaf, but they're just going to have to get over it this time. I have no potatoes and don't plan on getting them and surely don't feel like peeling potatoes, so it is what it is. All right. We're just going to get that formed now. And you just want to get your meatloaf mixed and formed, but try not to overwork it. I, I've let the Ninja Foodie preheat a little bit, and I'm going to put this ginormous meatloaf right inside. This thing is heavy. It's three pounds to be exact. But there we go. We're going to just let that go for an hour. And it may not take a whole hour, but that's what I would do if I was cooking it in the oven. But since it's going to be in a much smaller area, it, it'll probably cook a lot faster. But I will be here to check it all the way through. But that's it for now. All right, so I just flipped over the meatloaf because it was getting really browned on the bottom side. So we're gonna just let that top side get nice and crispy too. Next, I'm just going to cover this meatloaf with some cream of mushroom soup because that is the only way that my husband will eat it. It's going to kind of melt down off of the top of the meatloaf and go into the surrounding juices and then we'll just kind of pour them back on top so i just have this on very low temp now okay i've got the pasta drained and i'm just going to empty these cheese pouches into this hot pan and then i'll put the pasta back in and then mix it all up And I did make three boxes of the shells and cheese because if there's leftovers, this is one thing that I like to take to work with me for lunch. So we shall see. I'm sure there will be. We're not going to eat three boxes of mac and cheese. But I like to get my cheese pouches in the pan first so that they can kind of melt. But I haven't even made this kind of mac and cheese in what seems like forever, and it just sounded good to me. So here we are. Since we don't have any green kids here today, I'm going to add some black pepper to our mac and cheese because we really like it that way. And on the back burner here, I'm just warming up a can of peas. And that's it for dinner tonight. Meatloaf, mac and cheese, and peas. The next night we just went out to Applebee's for dinner. It was seriously just one of those days where cooking at home or even getting takeout and bringing it home was too hard. We just needed to show up somewhere and have someone else cook for us. I'm making a pot of the easiest goulash ever and I'm using a pound of Zesty Hot Bob Evans Sausage. And also a pound of ground beef because when you make something like goulash or spaghetti, you have to make enough for the whole neighborhood, even if you don't offer any to them. 
I'm using some garlic today and I'm just going to pour it in because as you can see I'm right down to the very bottom of this container so there's a lot of juice in there but we're gonna use it Alright, now that we've got this meat browned up, we're just going to drain the fat off of it and then return it back into the pan. I'm adding a can of tomato paste. Then some water. I'm starting off with four cups. And then four more, so that's a total of eight. Next, I'm doing a couple tablespoons of beef bouillon granules. I'm adding some Slap Your Mama Cajun seasoning. We like a little cayenne and a little spice in our goulash, so that's what I'm using today. Just kind of like a all-in-one seasoning. Now that the water is boiling, I'm just going to dump in a whole box of elbow macaroni. And then I could have sliced up some onions and some tomatoes and some peppers, but I always like to use up my leftover jars of salsa for meals like this. We're just gonna let those noodles cook and they're going to soak up so much of that liquid. I did say this was going to be the fastest goulash and probably the quickest one that I've ever made too. Just because I'm not cutting up any veggies. Everything is going in one pot. Just the way I like it. So make sure that you turn your heat down. Don't be like me and go sit down for five minutes and then almost burn everything. In fact, it is a little stuck to the bottom, so I'm just going to make sure, and you can see that little black fleck, but I'm going to make sure that I do not scrape the bottom, and I'll probably transfer it into a different pot, because I swear I only turned my back for a minute. It's still going to be good.